When it comes to your camera, do you know what the pros know? And do you know that they know about stuff that you might not know about, even though you might think that you know what they know? You know? There's only one thing that we love more than eating food with chopsticks, and that's photography. Do you know what they know? <laughs> I, I hope that made sense. <laughs> yeah, it made absolutely no sense. <laughs> but we thought it'd be kind of fun to just chat about like the things that the pros know about uh, your camera that you might not that know. you might not know. You yeah. know? Yeah. No. <laughs> so, you know, I think I think there's a lot of stuff that the pros assume you know, as all photographers should know, that you don't know. Yep. And, and we're and, just talking in circles, yeah. aren't we? Well, there's things that there's things that you learn about your camera if you've been using them for years and years and years that make your life easier. So what was something that I actually made you start doing two years ago? Yeah. And it's not because I was the pro, but you know, and you weren't, but. Good old BBF. Yeah, BBF. You know, best. Best buds. Buds forever. forever. <laughs> Back button focusing. Yep. Cause you know what? I used to hear people talk about it. And I'm sure you do too. You hear people go, are you back button focusing? And I kept thinking that had to do with my lens. Like, do I focus behind something and then it makes things better focused? Mm -hmm. Gosh. All that means is that yeah. I set my camera up so that the button on the back of my camera, the back button, now is my focus button. I don't use my front button to focus anymore. Yep. This one I use to focus, the back one. This one I use to take So the simply what picture. you do, right, is you, you hit that, that button, you focus. So if I, let's say I'm taking a picture of your nose, right? I'm going to focus on that. And then I can recompose to get my rule of thirds or whatever I want to Correct. do by holding that down. So yeah. it allows me, rather than, than the way I used to do it a long time ago, was use the dial and move that focus oh, point around. Oh gosh, yeah. Just, and I would just, often miss shots because, you know, it's just, it, it took a long time. Yeah. It takes, I will tell you what, when you first try it, you will hate it. You'll just be frustrated because your muscle memory says, no, it's up here, it's up here. Mm -hmm. Use that front button to focus. Once you condition yourself to that. Yep. Everything changes. It, 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 it takes a few days or a it week. It became a lot more comfortable to shoot. It is. And I tell you what, I don't miss focus very often anymore. Yeah. So I love it. Back love button it. focus is by far, I think, the number one things the pros have set their cameras yep. up to do that you might not be doing. Yeah, you know, something else that, that I've noticed <laughs> that really made a big difference in, and um, it's just hand holding technique, right? Yes. Because whether your camera is a light camera or a heavy camera, it really comes into, into play. You know, I see a lot of people nowadays doing this. Because right? they're, they're using, they're live, using view. live view. Correct. Which and live view is wonderful. It is for some things, yeah. right? If I'm laying down on the ground, I'm going to live view it because I can't get my face. Live view is great on a tripod. Exactly. But if you want to get the sharpest picture, I mean, it's just, you can't use live view. Yeah. I, I had a situation last night. I was, my daughter's in the marching band at school. The, the band photographer was using live view with a 70 to 200. Wow. So she was like holding it like this, right? Not even bracing the camera. And it was. Had 200 millimeter hand holding out like this. It doesn't work. Your it's, picture's it's gonna be to moving around. You're not gonna catch anyway. a target. But you know, the, the whole thing about like locking in your arms, yes. holding at the end of the lens, right? Yeah. Holding secure the, the body, don't do the freestyle, hey, I look cool, I can shoot with one hand type uh -huh. thing. That's just a ridiculous. Yep. The first thing, thing I see is this, you know, is, no, get those elbows, yeah. chicken, them, chicken wings that's in, right. get them tucked against yourself, you're, you're strong. Live view is wonderful, but guess what? Sometimes it's better to just put it against your face yeah, because now you have three points of contact. Yep. You have your elbows and now you have against your face. Yeah. It's gonna be yeah, much I mean, more Even seeing some of, some of the pro photographers, Joe McNally is one of them, right? That uses like his his shoulder That's right. and he braces it. Which in. actually it works good, but it works much better if you have a what's it called the grip, the grip, the extra grip, grip on there. So I, I think you know just since I've learned how to handhold, um, yeah. man, that made a huge huge difference. So support the lens yep. with your hand. Go ahead and hold it by the hood yep. if you need to. That's the best way. That's going to be your most supported yep. position on a big yeah, lens. So do that hand holding makes a huge huge difference yeah. because. Yeah. Most everybody's pictures, what what kills them is a blurry shot. Most blurry shots are because someone's trying to shoot yep. at a shutter speed that they cannot handhold. Mm -hmm. You learn how to handhold it, you suddenly have good photos. So, yeah. One of the other things that I know a lot of people don't know about is focus modes. So what they, you, in theory, what, what in theory they about? know about it, but the idea of whether you're using a single focus point or you're using continuous focus. Okay a servo focus and when to use those things, it will help you considerably. Yep. 
But well, you know, now that you say that, I think a lot of people don't even know that they can change that. Yeah. Right. I mean, you get a new camera, just trying to figure out where. To, in fact, on my A10, I was trying to figure out how do I change those focus modes. I actually pulled out the manual. Can you believe that? I read the manual. <laughs> no, because it's got this little this little button right here that you have to push in, and yep. then you dial it in the back, but. You know, I, I couldn't remember where that button was, right? And that will change my focus most. Yeah. So the problem is, is that all of our new cameras now, most of them come out of the box in a continuous focus mode. Mm. That means when I set it on something and I let go, it, it's still trying to follow that thing that I You'll initially was trying to track it. It's doing that thing in and out. Somebody moves and suddenly now your shot's out yep. of focus. So I love setting it just to that single focus where it's the, I tell it where to focus, it stays put. Totally. That's why I love the back button focusing, but learn where that is. That will change just the three things we talked about considerably because totally. those all things have to do with sharpness. They all have to do with being able to compose mm -hmm. better. So yeah, it's great. I mean, again, the pros know what we don't know, you know? <laughs> so I yeah. think that that definitely helps. But, you know, hopefully that kind of stuff helps for you. We'll, we'll be doing more of these kind of things in future episodes, but... I'm sure that we've but, missed some things. Oh, there's tons. I mean, there's tons. We can go down the camera. We just wanted to quickly do some things that we just figured that maybe you didn't quite know about. So if there's something that we forgot to put on this list that you're going, oh my goodness, why are they not saying it? Put it in the comments down below so that we can actually What do you know that the pros that? don't know? That's the one, right? So if you- if Maybe you, you're not a pro and you know something that the pros don't know that you know, they should know. Because I know that I don't know everything to know you know sure so anyways put that in the comments we would love to get that conversation started with you friends and uh we can go for there fortunate questions all right it is my turn let's see how the pass works oh, oh yes here yes. open it right over that so i will do that so today we get to see what do we see what do we see what do we see what do we, we see you still spill it all over the place i do all right this is from todd from casey missouri Missouri. I don't think we've ever had anybody from Missouri. Because we're big in Kansas City, though. You just don't know how big we are there. So, Todd says, Who do you consider the greatest influence in your photography? I like that question. Yeah, I do too. That might be a long answer. So, who, who do you consider as your greatest Right, Right off the top of my head, I think of, well, two guys. But, but Joe McNally. Like, I just throw your chopsticks on the floor. I just love Joe McNally's style. I like him as a person. I don't know him as a person, but just everything I've seen. Like yeah. that's, I kind of learned a lot of my stuff watching his videos. I mean, he's just really, really good. And you know what? I love the way he teaches because he teaches a complete lesson all the way from the most basic all the way through, but he's not scared to make a mistake. And he'll tell you, I blew that shot. It yeah. looks terrible. Let's change it, right? I really like that. The other guy, David Zeiser, right? He, <laughs> he created that book, Captured He'd be close on my list. I, it's funny, I'm sitting here going, Man, I have like four people instantly come to mind. Captured Sizer's by one the of light. them. Yep. Yeah, great book. Really good book. I always tell my photographer friends, like, if you can buy one book, buy the book Captured by the Light by David Zeiser. It's it's just practical, right? It's the best photography book. Okay. So that's your two. Yeah. Got more? No. Okay. That's it. I will give you two. First one's kind of personal, and the first one would be my friend John. He's the one that actually introduced me to photography, started teaching me photography. Everything that I do in photography is that love of photography is born out of that relationship with my friend who was a professional photographer that taught me, took me under his wing. Um, but that's more of the personal thing. But as far as like who's had the greatest influence on like what I like to do in photography, um, I still have to give two more answers because I don't know if this is you like influence or if this is just my favorite photographer. Triple play? Yeah, uh, Richard Avedon. Okay. And and what I, this is what it is. It's not the thing that people would think of like, because he has these great, incredible photos. It was the fact that this man was one of the greatest fashion photographers in the world, yet he's not really known for his fashion work. He's known for his personal work, mm -hmm. his projects. When he toured across the United States and took pictures of everyday people, he had this idea of, I want to capture the true person. There's all, th all kinds of cool stuff, I think, about Avedon that he's been one of the greatest influences. Um, but modern times, right? He's, he's been gone for a while now. Um, believe it or not, would be David Hobby. Really? Remember the Strobist? The Strobist. Yeah, that's fact, what- I have not seen anything from David I have not. David, where are you? But you know, you're, when you said Joe McNally, the first name popped in my head was, nah, David Hobby. It's because when I first started to play around with flash photography, 
I started religiously following David Hobby, mm-hmm. and I would wait for him each week to put out a blog post to just try what he said. Yep. And the stuff just blew me away, got me excited about shooting with light. And so, yeah, I'll end it there. Okay. That was good. Oops. John, Zeiser, Hobby. All I can remember is Missouri. Abaddon. I don't remember who, who wrote <laughs> Kansas the question. Kansas City, Missouri. But, but Missouri, thanks for the hey, question. That great question. And, Hard uh, one to answer. Yeah, every week, send in your questions. We love reading this. I mean, we get a ton of questions every week. Yes. And just our, our baker actually bakes them into the fortune cookie for right. us now. If you're lucky enough to send us a question, That's you can right. put it in the description below. Send it to us on our Facebook page or website. And if, if you do, you get the special Chopstick Guys That's right. sushi kit. So. If you actually get your question used on the air, we will be sending you the bamboo kit. So, uh, Todd, we're going to be sending this out to you. So uh, oh, look forward to you. <laughs> exactly. You're going to get the wonderful Chopstick bamboo chopstick set. Good question, Todd. Yes. I liked it. So what, what do you got for us, Mark? You got some... Some food for thought. Food for thought. You know, uh, the biggest thing is that, you know, a couple of these things, like the right off the bat, we talked about back button focusing. Mm-hmm. You know, and you were saying that's something you pushed me into. I still say it doesn't matter how long you've been shooting. I don't care if you've been shooting 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. There's always something to learn. You know, it's that whole always be learning. Yep. My food for thought is there's nobody that knows it all. Except for maybe the angry photographer. He knows quite a bit. <laughs> he so. does. He knows. he knows it all. Mine is exactly the same thing. It's like always be learning, right? I, we are professional photographers, so yes. we could be that pro, right? But, man, I don't consider myself like a know-it-all. Yeah. We've got this show, and we do the show actually because we teach each other stuff yeah. on the show. But, you know, it's that's what it's all about is, is constantly, constantly yes. learning and... It's that old cliche, the more that I learn, the more I realize how little I know or oh, something, totally. the more I know, the totally. more, yeah. But hopefully yeah. you guys found that, that helpful. I, you know, I, I love talking about this stuff. We love sharing information. Yes. That's kind of what we're, we're all about is sharing with you guys, part of the Chopstick family every single week. That's right. And like always, we ask you to like and subscribe this channel so we can keep sending you out this great great content that you're enjoying right now. Unbelievable content. It's fantastic content. And don't forget to... Ring the bell. Right up there. There's a little bell there. Click on that and you'll be notified every time that we put up a new video. That's right. So thanks again, everybody, for joining us. We love having you with us. We consider you family here on the Panoptic Chopstick Show. Thanks for joining the Chopstick, guys. And until next week, don't say forget to say sushi. sushi. That's right. We want to welcome you to our YouTube channel. That's right, the Panoptic Chopstick channel, where we are bringing fun to photography. Hey, we want to invite you each week to join us on Tuesday, where we put out a new episode of our Panoptic Chopstick show, where we will give you tips, tricks, interviews with photographers. We'll give you DIY projects to do on your own and maybe even inspire you a bit. That's right, including always a little dash of fun. So we want to invite you to go ahead and subscribe and like our channel, where you will get notified every Tuesday of brand new episodes. But welcome to the Panoptic Chopsticks channel. Come join the fun.